My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, we had left Bob, who had just landed in the lowlands of Minmus, collecting us some science. And uh, I left with the thought that uh, perhaps I should be exploring some more biomes. I still have quite a lot of Delta V left in the lander, and I thought, you know what, I should get Bob over to some other biomes. And what I'm sort of eyeing here are these sort of flats. I don't know which flats they are. They're lesser flats or greater flats or great flats or whatever. I get those all mixed up. But it's clearly some sort of flat. But before I do that, I also am eyeing this area right in here. Right in there. That's got to be slopes, right? I, I think that's got to be slopes in there. And so there's another biome I could get to. I, I don't want to put the lander in there because, well, as the name implies, they're sloped. So <laughs> what I was thinking about is just eva Bob over there. Um... And then he can go over there and just collect a surface sample and uh, an EVA report. I mean, it, it'll be science, so uh, might as well do that first. So that's going to be the plan, is to EVA Bob over there, then get back, and then do a suborbital hop over to those flats. And I'm just going to use the uh, waypoint manager to try and uh, give myself a waypoint to aim for. That'll be make, make, make the EVA over there quite a bit easier. The other thing you can see there as well is the Corian's orbit. It's that polar orbit that you see there. The Corian is Bob's ride home. He needs to get back to the Corian if we are going to return him to uh, Kerbin safely. So that's the other reason why I want to go in this direction. I want to move myself westward because I want to get myself underneath that orbit so that we can ultimately rendezvous with the Corian. Now I do have some science left over from the end of last episode to transmit, but my uh, my electrical power is pretty low, so I'm going to do some time warping here so that solar panels can recharge up my batteries, and then we'll get on to these uh, other, ooh, it's getting dark. Okay, well let's charge everything up. Let's take a look here, and I am losing sunlight. I am losing sunlight badly. Um, I think what I'm going to do is forego all transmissions because I don't want to deplete my electrical reserve with the sun going down. I think it's better to get this show on the road and get Bob out there towards that slopes biome. Alrighty, Bob, let's get going. And we're off. And you can see that nice waypoint being provided by the waypoint manager mod, except it's not on my nav ball. And I don't have any telemetry from the waypoint. That's because I have the wrong one selected. I don't want to go to the KSC. There we go. Let's close that. And now I can see I am just over five kilometers away. And yeah, the telemetry is great. It gives you a heading to follow. Puts a point on the nap ball. Uh, it also gives me an ETA, which is about 12 minutes. Yeah, using these thruster packs to get around Minmus is so much easier than it is on the moon. Because of the lower gravity, of course. So getting over there went without really any incidences at all. I'll say it also took me a lot less than 12 minutes because I increased my surface speed there. You can see now I'm going almost 40 meters a second. In fact, you could actually get yourself up to orbital velocity if you so desired and put your Kerbal into orbit from Minmus. Don't think you have the Delta V to get yourself back down, though. Okay, I'm looking at my. Um, Oh, I'm in the slopes now. In the slopes. And I need to slow myself down. You know, I think in game I've not realized. There we go. Now I'm thrusting in the right direction. i got to kill off my horizontal velocity, just, just like doing a landing. Pushing that uh, prograde vector down to the bottom of the nav ball this time. There it goes. Okay, and again, keeping an eye on my vertical velocity too. Don't want to hit the ground too hard. Almost there, about 10 meters from the surface. Whoops, a little up. There we go, and... Nice soft little touchdown. Okay, let's do our EVA report and our surface sample here from the slopes. And uh, we don't need that waypoint anymore, so we'll delete that. Yeah, I want to delete the waypoint. There we go. And uh, 
let's get ourselves back to our lander. And it was while I was on my way back that I realized, you know, that the, the ground where Bob was standing there really wasn't sloped that steeply, dis despite being the slopes. I don't see any reason why I can't put a lander there, and that would give me a lot more science because I have all the science equipment that's on the lander. So I made the decision on my journey back that I was going to uh, bring the lander over there anyway. Unfortunately, I had deleted that waypoint that I had that Bob got, got guided Bob there, so I had to recreate that and try to guesstimate whereabouts that was, but uh, that wasn't so tough. So uh, with the light failing, it was time for us to fire up these engines and head west. Well, engine really, there's just one. And I'm not going to make the same mistake I made on the moon a couple of episodes ago. I'm going to pitch myself over to 45 degrees. And just kind of hold that pitch. Until my uh, trajectory takes me over the waypoint. A little bit more north. And that's pretty good. Let's go with that. And now we'll just uh, drift on over there and do the opposite on the other side. And ooh, we're upside down. <laughs> Let's find that. The right vector there. There we are. Mimesis gravity giving us lots of time to think about what we're doing, which is nice. We're pretty much following the same path that Bob did earlier, except going much higher as you can see I'm trying to land in about the same spot i think i overcooked that initial burn yeah i shouldn't have burned so far so i'm, I'm going to bring it back a little bit burn horizontally take off some of that horizontal speed bring that trajectory a little bit closer to the waypoint there it looks a little bit better otherwise you can just think of bob as the world's slowest ballistic missile Anyway, as far as the descent goes, this is pretty much the same as what you saw at the conclusion of the last episode. So we're just going to cut along. The one thing I'm doing differently is watching my biome as being reported by Kerbal Engineer, which is now telling me I am over the slopes. Uh, let's see, I might just move my waypoint over. Whoa, 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 Mid Midlands. Wait, 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 whoa. Just changed from slopes to Midlands. I have not been in the Midlands. I did not know there were Midlands here. I was going to push my uh, my icon over. Oh, now I see why it was straight down, because <laughs> I had it on the orbit mode. I should be on surface mode. But now, I kind of do want to fall straight down. I'm forgetting about the waypoint. I am over the Midlands, and that is a biome I have not been in yet. I was in the Lowlands earlier, so I'm just going to go straight down. Okay, so get back down there. Boy, Midlands, that'd be awesome. Oh, wait a second. Shoot, Kerbal Engineer is saying it's Lowlands again. Oh, I want to get those Midlands. Okay, let's let's see if I can point myself. No, not that way. Yeah, that, that would be about right. A little bit more that way. Yeah, let's, let's burn that way. Trying to get my trajectory closer to where that waypoint see, it was. See if I can get those Midlands back. I see Midlands again. Okay, okay, okay. Let's fall a little bit further. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Time to put that uh, retrograde icon back up to the top. I am over the Midlands, going straight down. Not the most efficient transfer over to here probably ever, but uh, worth it to scoop up a biome that I wasn't expecting. Just checking the science that I have stored here. Yeah, I'm not going to transmit this because of uh, the failing sunlight, but uh, Bob's going to have to go out there and do some science transferring once we land. Oh, about 400 meters from the surface. Let's uh, push that uh, icon a little bit more to the top there. Slow. Oh, can see my lights.
And the same idea as before, just cutting down my velocity, keeping it up on the top, trying to avoid myself from going up. Last time I hit, I bounced a little bit, so let's see if I can avoid the bounce. All right, 30 meters. Whoa, whoa, going up. Don't want to go up. And you just see my shadow now coming into view. And oh, just kissing the surface. All right, we got to collect ourselves some science here. We got some atmospheric scans, crew report. EVA report and temperature scan. You can see that some stuff is missing, and that's because Bob, in his haste, leaving the lowlands, forgot to uh, collect the science and uh, reset some of this equipment. So we'll get out there. Whoa, 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 wait, I missed the temperature scan, I think. Yeah, I did. Let's get that temperature scan. And then Bob will get out there, collect up what science he can, reset the equipment, and see what else there is to get. All right, so uh, we'll let go. Bop on over to here. All right, we got ourselves an EVA report and a surface sport surface report <laughs> to do in the Midlands. And now let's uh, collect some science, reset equipment, and then collect some more science. And I put this little ladder part over here at the back. Let's get up there, Bob. Right on the back of the materials bay which is nicely conveniently located for Bob. He can reach all of the science equipment from here. So collect, reset, and then collect again, making sure to scrounge out all the science that we can out of this biome. But then it was time to try and find these slopes, which is the whole reason why I came down this way in the first place. So I set up myself another waypoint in an area where I thought there should be some slopes. And also where I noticed it was relatively flat. Again, I don't want to land where the ground is sloped too much. Yeah, map view's not going to help. <laughs> we're, too, we're too close to the waypoint. That's no good. Okay, let's, let's push ourselves a little further. I don't think I uh, have enough velocity here. Okay, and then what we'll do, I'll just point myself vertically like this. And I'm just going to watch uh, my vertical speed. Mostly just watching the, uh, the gauge up there at the top near my alt altimeter. And uh, just giving me myself some puffs to sort of keep myself a decent distance above the ground. Kind of the exact same thing as what you do when you are uh, using the thruster pack in EVA mode to get yourself from one spot to another. And I did this for a little bit of time and quickly realized this is just stupid. This is just a colossal waste of fuel. I'm not finding the slopes. Um, I need to put this thing down. And I mean, and just send Bob out on some reconnaissance. Get Bob out there and find some slopes. I mean, it's not like I got all the fuel in the world here. Remember, I still do want to get myself over to those flat area that, that there's a flats biome of some kind. Not to mention get, uh, get back up to the Karayan so that we can actually uh, get ourselves out of here again. And it didn't take long for Bob to find himself the slopes biome. And then I used the Waypoint Manager mod to put a ma uh, marker right where Bob was. So now I know exactly where the biomes, where the slope biome is. And it was just an easy matter to get the Kegel over there. Okay, just about there. Touchdown. All right. A little bit of a hill. But we'll turn the SAS off, and it's still stable there, so that's good. So, we can do this, get this done. Again, it's just rinse and repeat, collect all the science that we can. Still have 923 meters per second left, it's delta V. Should be enough to get ourselves over to the flats, and then get ourselves back up to the Kuraian. Oh my gosh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, what a dope. You know, I've been chasing the sun westward this whole time. You would think I'd be used to this. West. You can get that waypoint blinking at me. Okay, here we go. 
yeah, I've been I've been kind of uh, riding the Terminator all the way through this particular process. And by the Terminator, I don't mean Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. I mean uh, the boundary between the night and the day side of a planet. Riding Arnold Schwarzenegger, I don't think, would be a good idea. Now, an important thing to notice here is the Korion's orbit is already to the west of these flats. I do not like that <laughs> because, um, yeah, I, I'm still not up to the Korion's orbit. The Minmus is rotating faster than my ability to keep moving across the planet in these suborbital hops. I'm just spending too much time dorking around, I think. But, um, the, uh, the, I mean, the efficient thing to do would be to just ride Minmus around until I encounter the Korion's orbit on the other side. But, of course, that's going to mean going through a Minmus night. And a Minmus night is about a day, a Kerbin day, you know, about six hours. And, uh, well, right now I am charging my batteries up again because I am once again into the sunlight, but um, I don't know if this thing can survive six hours of night. I don't know if the batteries will last that long. And I am playing with TAC life support. And if I run out of electricity, I think Bob's got about two hours and then he freezes to death. And maybe he'll make it and maybe he won't, but I'd rather not put it to the test. So I came up with this, this alternate plan of doing one more suborbital hop. There's this plateau that's to the west of these flats that I now know are the gray flats. And I'll do one more orbital hop to there, get myself west of the Korion's orbit. Then I can wait for the Korion's orbit or for Minmus to rotate under the Korion's orbit, really. And then I can do uh, my launch and rendezvous with with the Korion. All righty, just a few meters to go. And we're down in our fourth biome of this mission. I, I gotta say, I, I'm pretty excited about that. I've had a number of uh, parcel successes lately and it's nice to have a mission exceed expectations. It's a nice change. And uh, we'll take the science out of the capsule and then restore it again. This is just to uh, store it back in the capsule just to free up that crew report and we'll go around and collect science like we've done in the other biomes of course but uh something i've been neglecting neglecting to do in my zeal for science and that is to plant flags at my various landing locations i gotta think about this but i believe this is the fifth landing of this particular uh this particular uh mission yeah, I've landed in the lowlands twice, twice in the lowlands, the midlands, the slopes, and now in the great flat. So landing, let's see, landing five. I think that's all I'll type here. And oh, wait, I still have the cap lock on from doing the landing. Landing number five. Oh, I should mention the vessel is the Kegel one, of course, landing five. And well, let's just explain the situation that I forgot to put flags at the midlands. And at the slopes, where I was previously, just to explain that this actually was five landings on my way here. And also landed at the lowlands twice. There we go. That accounts for the five landings. Yeah. Oops. A rather long plaque, I suppose. Yeah, it's too bad I forgot to put those other flags down. It would have been neat to see sort of a a chain of flags on my way here but I do have a first one of course and now I have this one and of course uh, we're gonna go around and we're gonna collect science and then Bob's gonna collect the science from the various scientific instruments there just making sure it's all collected so time to get Bob back into the capsule we'll take the fun way around to the other side of the capsule Ooh, nice view of curb in there off in the distance all right, let's get Bob back in and let's get ready to perform our final suborbital hop. All righty, we are off. And again, I set myself up a waypoint. You can see it there to the west of the Korion's orbit. The plan is to, to land there, see if it's another biome. And then we'll wait for the Korion's orbit to pass over us. And then we will put ourselves into orbit. And perform a rendezvous. There we go. That ought to do it. Alrighty, here we go. Ooh. 
I'm just taking a look at my remaining delta V and I can see I got 464 meters per second of delta V left in the craft. Hmm. I don't know. It's going to be close. It takes about 200 meters per second to get into orbit. And that's actually with an orbit, a prograde orbit, going to the east with zero inclination. Of course, I have to go into a polar orbit, which will even be a little more expensive. And that leaves me, you know, maybe a couple hundred meters per second to perform this. It's going to be tight. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think, I, ooh. Is the risk worth it? I don't think the risk is worth it. I don't even know if this biome is a biome that I haven't gone to yet either. I have no idea what this biome is where I have the waypoint. Let's see if I cannot perform my insertion from right here. Let's see if I can get into orbit from where I am. I'm noticing that my apoapsis is right underneath the Corian's orbit. So let's put a maneuver node right there. Add that maneuver. And let's see if I cannot. I got okay, obviously I have to burn a lot. Whoop, whoop. Ah, that's a little bit too much. I'm a little bit less than four minutes away from Apoapsis, so I do have time to play with this. And after just a little bit of playing, I ended up with this 12 by 12 polar orbit at a cost of only 187 meters per second. I mean, I'm hardly doing this the most efficient way possible, but but it's gonna work. I have the delta V to do it. And absolutely, I think I should play it safe rather than just risk one more landing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the burn. And as we uh, approach this burn, I do want to draw attention to the fact that the Kerbal Engineer is telling us that the biome below us is the lowlands. So landing there wouldn't have been of any value anyway. So this was definitely the right way to go. And I suppose it goes without saying that... Uh, I in no way paid any attention to where the Corian was, as this was sort of a last minute decision to do this. And you can see it up there above the North Pole of Minmus, so it is quite a ways behind me. We're just going to finish off our insertion here. There we go. But because the Corian is behind me, I'm going to have to slow myself down. And in order to slow myself down, I'm going to have to increase the altitude of my orbit. So I'm going to place a maneuver at this spot right around here that's up ahead of me where the two orbits are crossing. So that seems to be a good place to shoot for my rendezvous. And then all I'm going to do is give myself a little bit of prograde. So we just start burning prograde to increase the altitude of our orbit. There we go. I'm a little, why am I not getting any encounter indicators? What's going on here? Oh, I don't have the Korean set as a target. Well, there we go. I got to reduce. Okay. There are my close encounter indicators. Okay. So I got to bring my apoapsis down. And after a little bit of playing around, I ended up with this uh, 12 meter per second burn. Um, that will bring my closest approach around half a kilometer, and that burns seven minutes away. So, uh, Bob, you're going to be home in no time. Alrighty, so here we are performing the burn. I'll just lock it onto the prograde there. It's close enough. Okay, a little bit more. Alright, that's good. Let's get rid of the maneuver. See what the... Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Okay, what do we got? Ooh, half a kilometer and a little bit more than an hour. Easy peasy. You know, I, that was pretty fortuitous, actually, that the Corian was behind me the way it was. I mean, if it was ahead of me, uh, I wouldn't be able to speed myself up because I was only in about a 10, a 12 kilometer altitude orbit. So I wouldn't have been able to actually reduce my orbit that much without risking crashing into the surface. Um, so getting Bob home in just a little over an hour, that, uh, or not home, but uh, back to the Corian in just a little, more, little bit more than an hour, that, that worked out pretty well. Of course, we're going to have to use the Corian to actually perform the uh, docking, as the Kegel doesn't have any RCS, but of course, it's pretty standard fare for a veteran pilot like Valentina. So after being on his own for over three hours, Bob is now reunited with his crewmates aboard the Corian. Of course, he's going to transfer over all of that science that he pulled up from the surface that we're going to hold on to. I don't want to transmit it in case something goes wrong. 
Um, you know, I can't get back down to the surface and get it again. So we're just going to do the safe thing and hang on to it. But with Bob and his science now safely aboard the Karayan, let's take a look at the experience that these folks gain. So we'll start off with Bob here. Bob is at four out of eight, still level one, but he's got his orbit of Kerbin for two, fly by the moon for two, a plant flag on Minmus for six, which means once I get him back down to the surface, he will be at 10, which will be awesome. That will be level two. And Valentina? That two out of eight, but an orbit of Kerbin plus an orbit of the moon for three, and then an orbit of Minmus for four gives her nine. So she will be going up to level two. And then finally, Bartner, well, an orbit of Kerbin for two and an orbit of Minmus for four brings him up to six. So he'll be approaching level two, but not quite there. But overall, a good experience haul. And then comes a rather sad job. It, I, I'm going to say goodbye to the Kegel. Uh, we're, of course, going to transfer out the resources and and also do the indignity of uh, transferring in uh, uh, the waste, <laughs> getting rid of as much waste as we can. So uh, I guess we're going to turn this into a bit of a poo barge. <laughs> and I thought about uh, actually giving it kind of a Viking funeral. I do have some explosives aboard the Korayan, and I was thinking of uh, sending this thing off with a bang, but instead I'm going to go with a whimper and I'm going to leave it in orbit because, well, you don't know. I might just uh, have a use for it again in the future. It is perfectly serviceable and perfectly functional we just have to fuel it up again and get the poo out and uh, it's gonna be fine uh and the reason i did this is because i just don't really i can't think of an immediate use for it i don't see a reason to bring it back with me uh i'm gonna get out of man landings for a little bit and by the time i get back to man landings uh, i certainly plan on having a much bigger lander than this one and getting uh, more than just a single kerbal down there to the surface as for getting our brave Kerbinauts back home, you can see I've already got set up 158 meter per second burn to get out of here and get ourselves on a trajectory back to Kerbin. And the Kryon has 713 meters per second left of Delta V, so uh, we are very comfortable for our return journey. Oh, hang on, we got a notification here. Ooh, some more milestones. Our first rendezvous around Mimis. <laughs> our first space station. Okay, I'll take that. And our first docking around Mimis. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying these milestones. Uh, they add a lot to these missions. Anyway, it's nice. This burn's coming up pretty much right away. Unlike the moon, which takes only six days to get around Kerbin, Minmus takes 50 days. That's the length of its orbital period. So in the couple of days that we've been spending uh, dorking around Minmus, uh, our polar orbit with respect to Kerbin has hardly changed at all. So we can just basically blast our way out of here, which is good because I would have to wait another 25 days for the orbit to be oriented in such a way that my escape can be relatively efficient. And as the Karayan says goodbye to Minmus, we're going to say goodbye to this particular episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.